Hello and welcome to the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show on audiosportsonline.net and XRB Radio, the voice of Hendricks County. Upcoming on this episode, we have a lot to cover tonight. We'll talk about the last couple of weeks for Brownsburg football coach with head coach Brett Comer. And we will also recap last week's games and look ahead for what's in store for us this Friday. Um, and we'll also have a couple of his players, Tyler Kurtz and uh, defensive back Brad Geilinger will be joining us as well. Um, and we'll also review all the actions we always do around Hendricks County. Uh, high school sports from last week. McDonald's Henders County Sports Show is brought to you by your local Avon or Brownsburg McDonald's. You can stop in any stop in any Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's and try one of their two two dollar tasty specials: the jalapeno burger or triple cheeseburger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Henders County Sports Show, taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on XRBRadio.com, sixteen ten a.m. McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they are located at the corner of Maine and Odell next to Marsh and just off of Green Street next to Interstate 74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or on Rockville Road next to Meyer. Stop in and try them today. Today is Wednesday, September 10th, 2014, from the Green Street McDonald's location in Brownsburg. This is the McDonald's County Sports Show. I'm your host, J.P. Sinclair, and I'm joined by, once again, by uh, Brownsburg head football coach Brett Comer. How are you doing tonight, Coach? Very well, thanks. So um, it was a pretty interesting uh, week for you. Uh, last couple of weeks, you um, got a couple good wins for your team. You took on a, a very tough Franklin community team, and not only was your favorite, uh, your former head coach there, and was honored, but you got your 50th win. So can you elaborate on just how much that night meant for you? Uh, that was the Lawrence North game, uh, our, our home opener, and uh, it, it meant a lot. It was neat to have Mike there especially, uh, and especially to have him present the ball uh, after the after the game was finally over. Uh, to be honest, I had forgotten all about the 50. One of our coaches said something to me about it on the headset that he wanted to be the first one to congratulate me. I'm like, well, I forgot all about that. And then uh, Coach Godin was there under false pretense because it's our 30th year. 30th anniversary for our 84 state champion team. I had even called him to get him set up, and I had no idea why he was there. So they they pulled one over on me because I wasn't even thinking about our 50th win. I just wanted to win one, so no less 50. So so was it good to still see him? And, oh, it was and great I'm sure to that see night him, meant a lot. I mean, yeah, getting the 50th win, that's kind of, a, you know, it's a milestone. Yeah, it, it we're in the middle of the year, so it'll mean something later, I think. Um, but it was great to have Mike there and, and a couple former players. His son, Danny Godin, was there, and then our quarterback, Danny Gatlin, was there, both guys that – that I played with back in the day. So, and we've known, you know, known each other since we were kids. Um, it was, it was a great evening. Yes. Well, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about your team. Um, we haven't had the privilege of talking to you in a couple of weeks. So before we get into last week's game, let's go back to that Lawrence North game where you got that 50th win. Okay. Uh, your team got the job done and, and really in minimal time when you consider it, you held the ball for 15 minutes in this game, but you're still able to put up 28 points on the board and double up your opponent. So, right. First of all, Lawrence North is a, is a plays in the mick. Um, and they have they have some good players. They are the biggest offensive line we'll see all year. Their left tackle was six seven, like three forty five. I mean, he was. I made fun of Coach Godin because he looked so short standing next <laughs> to him before the game at the coin toss. Um, but they are a big football team, and and they run the wing T, so they're a difficult team to stop. We didn't do a very good job of stopping them. Uh, you just can't recreate that kind of offense. And the same thing's true of Franklin's offense and the flex bone. And we know that because we ran it for the past five years. So we kind of knew what was coming, and yet we still had a difficult time stopping both of them. Uh, Lawrence North game, we did indeed go up and down the field pretty well. Uh, Tokes had a big night with a couple hundred yards rushing, and we were. I thought we were, that uh, Hunter was very efficient throwing the ball. I don't remember. I think he was like ten of thirteen or something along those lines that evening, 13, yeah. and and was and distributed the ball. We didn't just key in on one guy and and did a good job of taking what they what they gave us per se. Um, and you know, obviously it worked out for us. Twenty eight to fourteen. We got a couple turnovers, uh, which were big for our defense and and allowed us to win the game. Yeah, you talk about you know your young sophomore quarterback and Hunter Johnson. He continues to to impress. You know, he did solid just like you said against the Wildcats. He was. 
10 of 13 for 106 yards and one touchdown. Mm -hmm. I mean, what can you say about how he's been reliable for you the last couple of weeks? Well, and that's what he's – the, old, the older he gets, the more reliable he's going to be. Um, and, you know, I, I had a quote in the paper this week about that he still makes sophomore mistakes. He's still a sophomore, but he also makes plays that sophomores shouldn't be making. Um, and, and it's nice to see him grow and to continue to watch it. And it's, it's also a neat process to watch that happen. Uh, you know, every week, week after week, it's better and better, and hopefully that continues. Well, we talked about it last time. You know, he kind of had to step into a, a big-time role last year as the freshman. So this year, seeing that continued growth, do you think that's really helped him, you know, having to do with the struggles of being a freshman quarterback last oh, year? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, getting the playing, playing times in, is, is just valuable, period. Um, and he struggled some last year, yet he still made some good plays. Uh, this year it's uh, a different kid. He's a lot more confident. Uh, I think he's having more fun because he's more relaxed. And like we said uh, you know, a few weeks ago, he made the comment in an interview that he's just one of the guys now. He's not the freshman because last year he was the only freshman on the varsity and he was playing. Um, so he, he fits in and, and it, he's, he's having fun playing ball, and that's the whole idea. Well, we're definitely going to talk a lot about junior Tox Akinabadi. I mean, he's continued to amaze. I mean, in this game he had 227 yards on only 23 carries and three touchdowns. I mean, Holy cow, I mean, this guy's just become beast mode for your team this season. Well, he's, Tokes has been around for a while, and, and that's weird to say because he's only a junior, uh, and he's, he's got a lot of games left in purple and white, luckily for us. Um, started as a freshman for us out of necessity and to a credit to his ability, uh, and then you know racked up over 1,000 yards last year as a sophomore. So he's, at, he's over 2,000 yards already. Uh, he's very close to the school record for career rushing, uh, and he's got, oh, I don't know, this year and all of next year to play. So... <laughs> Um, he's yeah, going to shatter that one. He's going to uh, – let's hope so. Uh, absolutely. Sounds like we need to give him the ball more. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's put that in the game plan. <laughs> Just run straight forward. Um, we're going to also talk to junior wideout Tyler Kurtz, but I want to talk to you a little bit about him. He was really the go-to target. He's, you know, you mentioned he spread the ball around, but yep. his main go-to target has been Tyler Kurtz. And, you know, it's been a, a reliable you know person for Hunter Johnson to go to. I mean, how was he able to get into the open field to be such a recipient in the receiving game? Well, the two of them do developed some chemistry uh, working together throughout the summer uh, when we went to the IU camp Tyler had a really good camp uh, got called upstairs talked to IU coaches uh, he's obviously a very good athlete he's a member of the 4 by 4 state champion team uh, he was on the basketball team as well so he's one of few three sport athletes that produces at a high level and, and he's an athletic kid so his attitude has, has been great as well um, he played last year as a sophomore as a, as a free safety uh, this year we switched him to offense knowing what we or at least what we thought we could do uh, and with the ability of other kids to play that you know a safety spot we could put him on offense and and that's been that's been very good for us and hopefully that'll continue well talking about you know just that offensive as a whole you know Hunter Johnson you know being able to throw the ball around to a couple of different targets you have talks running the ball I mean it becomes a, a very balanced offense for you when you look at it um, because it gives you more options you know to either throw the ball pass the ball and how does that work into your game plan well it's it's that, that's everybody's game plan is you want to be able to throw it and run it uh it's high school football you win games by running the football um yet we think we have the ability to throw it too so we'll we'll take what the defense gives us or attempt to take what they give us and and do the best that we can but uh it's nice to have guys that can deliver plays um include whether it's tokes or whether it's hunter or tyler or anybody else that's on our offense uh, having go to go to plays, if you will, is, is uh, we got a few in our back pocket. We think, and and whether it's Hunter or Tokes doesn't matter. Well, it should be interesting when you with you look at the game coming up. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about last week. Okay, you followed up the big win against Lawrence North by facing a young up and coming team in Franklin mm -hmm. Community. This team was really young when I got. I saw them tw play twice last year. Very yeah. young team, very young head coach, and you know. Your team was really pushed by this team, uh, the 2-1 and one Grizzly Cubs. I mean, it's a Franklin community that does really well rushing the ball from their offensive standpoint in that wishbone. And, um, you're, you know, they have a good young quarterback, a sophomore T.J. Allfield, and your team was able to still pull out the win. Yeah, it was uh, the, the comment, and, and we almost laughed a little bit during the game. When it was 14-0, to nobody was laughing, of course, but uh, they gave us a taste of what we've done for the past five years to other people, and that was rush the football take advantage of turnovers and, and eat up the clock, uh, which I'm not sure what our time of possession was, but I think it was around 2-1. to one. Uh, They had the ball twice as many minutes as we did. Um, the beginning of that game, we had uh, two turnovers on the first two offensive plays that we ran. It was 14-zip before we started. And we made the comment on the headset, the, good, you know, the bad thing is we're down 14-0. to zero. The good thing is there's only seven minutes gone in the game, so we have plenty of time to come back or plenty of time for them to score more points. And uh, we were... 
we were fortunate they they couldn't stop us. Um, they did have nine seniors on that offense, so they're not they're not that young. They were long, they're, young they're last year. They're not that young. Yeah, <laughs> not now. Uh, as a matter of fact, their coach and I talked before the game, and, and he kind of sandbagged me a little bit. So, oh, well, if we can stop you, I said okay. I said I know what the flex bone can do, and and it you know it it elevates the kids that are running it because it's difficult because you don't see it week in and week out, and it's tough to prepare for. And that, you know that's why we ran it for five years here, and it it delivered some big victories for us as well. Uh, once again, want to talk a little bit about Hunter Johnson from this one. He was, once again, first rate, just a solid 113 yards on 8 of 13 passing again. He did have one interception this one. So yeah. um, when you see him make that interception, you talk about those uh, those turnovers in the you know first couple of minutes. Did it seem to rattle him at all? No, nah, the interception didn't. He was upset because of the ball that he threw. But, um, you know, the kid made a nice play. If you go back and look at it, the corner sinks under it and, and made a good play. Other kids practice too. Um, whether it's Franklin, Lawrence North, Avon, doesn't matter. They – they practice too, so and they're going to make plays just like we do. Um, also, once again, I want to have to bring up the name Talks. You know, he's he's just become beast mode. I mean, he rushed for a phenomenal 351 yards and and four touchdowns on only 25 carries. Um, the 351 yards was the school record for Brownsburg. Uh, and the the best thing about it, and the thing that one of I should say the one of the things that we're really proud of, is that evening. Uh, somebody posted that on Twitter, on you know Instagram, whatever it was, and Isaac Beverstock commented back. And Isaac is the kid that set that record just a couple of years ago at Lafayette, Jeff, and congratulated him and told him to keep going. And that, that as a head coach, is really uh, a neat thing because you know, you're know you really proud of your kids for doing that. And you know he's still involved in our program, and the kids that graduate still watch what we do and reached out and made a comment to Tokes um, you know, through social media. I don't know that he's called it by any means. Isaac's playing at Indiana State, and he was playing. Uh, he was actually playing IU that week with Chase Dutra. So, you know, some of our kids still watch us, even though they're playing their own games, whether in the Big Ten or wherever they are. Yeah, I mean, you talk about that. I mean, that's that's a big, that's a nice thing to have a community, even no matter yeah. through the years. You know, these kids, you know, helping each other along. You know, giving them encouraging. You know, yeah, uh, it, Tonks but, has a very high ceiling. And, so. and, it, and it's not just him. It's it's our team in general. There was a kid that came to practice. They brought his two little brothers. And I walked over because our, you know, our, cla- our practices are closed, etc. And he's a former player, and I like, you know, shook his hand, gave him a hug, and, and told him he could hang out for a little while. Uh, we've been, been contacted by, you know, everybody from Chris Jones who played plays for the Patriots now. To, you know, I got an email from from Kyle Christie before our first game, uh, wishing us good luck, and and that's neat. I mean, that's that's why you do this. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've coached baseball before, and it's great to see the kids grow. But even after school, you know, after you get oh, done yeah. being their their first. Yep. high school football coach you're still always going to be their yep. coach you bet you bet and that and we're proud of that and we take that, that that's a big deal for us and that's a you know that's a serious thing about our job is is the impact that we get to have on kids yeah and you talked talking about talk still i mean this this season you know a total of 683 yards almost 228 yards per game like I almost want to get this guy on my fantasy team because yeah. Jamal Charles did absolutely nothing for me this week. I'm pretty sure Tox could fill that role. Well, well, Tokes, we got to. I got to correct you. You got to call him Tokes. You got to call the guy by his name. He rushes for that many yards. We'll call him what. It, you can call him whatever you want, I guess. But, um, yeah, he. The neat thing is he's doing it within the realm of what we do and not just trying to make big plays. He's taking what is given uh, and what's presented for him up front. And on Friday night, he, he indeed looked for some home run shots, and he took them where he tried to bounce it outside or whatever. Um, you know, this Friday night, he can't do that. He's got to do with it. It's got to be within what's what's in our offense and, and follow the blocking scheme, and he'll make big plays on, off of those plays or off of the things that other people do for him. Yeah, I also want to talk about senior Jose Hacker. I mean, he kind of had a little bit of a breakout game for you in this one, scoring 10 points. He was 4-4 uh, four four on PATs and 2-2 two two on field goals. He also had three uh, touchbacks on his sixth kickoff. So um, with that kind of performance, if reliable, it can go a long way for your team. Well, it was really neat that he stepped up, and, and we were really proud of him. Uh, he was our special teams player of the week. Uh, the 42-yard field goal w- was big, and he drilled it. I mean, it was good from 50. You watch it, watch, we go back and watch it on film. It could have been longer than that. But uh, you're right, his accuracy and his ability to convert those is big. Uh, with our kickoffs, he might have had more than three touchbacks, but uh, occasionally we'll kick it short or kick it high or flip it across the field, whatever. Um, matter of fact, we did an onside kick that we got that we recovered uh, because of a great kick by him as well that popped over the kid in the front wall and, and went into the hands, right into the hands of one of our players. So uh, he's done a really good job and stepped up. Uh, we have a long line of kickers here from you know they, they go back before Kyle Christie and Brandon Dowers, and, and now it's Jose's turn. 
uh, looking ahead, it doesn't get any easier for your team. I mean, they face a 2-1, and one, uh, number 7-ranked Avon High School, whose only loss came against number 1 Ben Davis. So um, they're a very impressive team that you're going to have to face. Yeah, and, and one that we're familiar with. Uh, coaching staff, as far as with knowing each other, as far as players knowing each other, some of them communicate um, you know, with each other, good or bad, I guess. But uh, that, that's happened a little bit. And you're right, we're going to have to play very well to beat them. They're a good football team. Um, they're led by junior quarterback Brandon Peters, who continues to grow in his third year, um, averaging almost 220 yards per game through the air. So um, any kind of game plan to try and slow him down? Uh, no comment. <laughs> no comment. Yeah, keep yeah. that under wraps. Yeah, wait, yeah. Um, the Orioles also have a very good running back in the, of their own right, and David Tennant, um, who's averaging over 100 yards per game. So um, you know that combined threat in their offense is going to be uh, a tough, tough thing to, to compete with. I do want to go back to what you said, you know, I noticed it during a lot during basketball when I first started doing this. You know, a couple t- times I saw I'd go to an Avon game and to call it, and there would be some Brownsburg kids there. Mm-hmm. And the kids knew each other; they're familiar with each other. It's a rivalry, but it's a very nice, friendly rivalry. Well, that, that, that's also what what makes it neat is is that you get to play against people that you know a little bit. We we go to camp together. Uh, we're at, we were at IU camp together this year and worked together a little bit or worked against each other a little bit. Um, and and you're right. I mean, they have a quarterback. They got running backs. They got g- good defense. Uh, and it will be a challenge for us to win. However, you know it, it's Friday night. We're going to line up at seven o'clock just like they are and play ball. So, well, I'm, I'm almost afraid to ask you my next question again. No comment again. I mean, what are some of the keys to your your victory for this against the Orioles? We have some young kids that have to step up or grow up really quickly. Um, you go back to the Franklin game. We we started three sophomore defensive tackles and two two sophomore offensive linemen. So those kids have to grow up fast. And and there's no better no better place or or a, a different a great attitude an atmosphere to do it than, than playing in an Avon Brownsburg rivalry game because it'll be electric and, and a lot of fun. Uh, but then again, as we've told our kids, it's one game. That's it. It's one game. Uh, we haven't played an HCC game yet, so it's our first one. It's their second uh, because of the way the schedules are built. Uh, but it'll be exciting and, and a neat atmosphere, and hopefully the weather won't be like it is today since you guys brought me out here in a tornado <laughs> warning. But, uh, yeah, it'll, it's going to be a fun night. Well, I wish you luck in that Avon game and uh, going forward for the rest of the season. So uh, good luck, Coach, and hopefully you'll get number 51 or 52. I hope we're at 52 by then, yeah. (laughs) Okay, thank you very much. Yep, you have a good day. Welcome back, everybody. Sorry for the little slow start here with our uh, player interviews, but uh, this is the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show on audiosportsonline.net, brought to you by local Brownsburg and Avon McDonald's. You can stop in any Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 tasty specials, the jalapeno burger or triple cheeseburger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show Taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on xrbradio.com, 1610 a.m. Of course, McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they're located at the corner of Maine and Odell next to Marsh and just off Green Street where we're at tonight next to Interstate 74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or on Rockville Road next to Meyer. Stop in either Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's for their $2 tasty specials, the jalapeno burger or triple cheeseburger today. Uh, like I said, we do got a treat for you this week, folks. Uh, got a couple of Brownsburg players, and we're going to start with uh, Mr. Brad Geilinger, number nine. He's a uh, senior this year. He's listed at 5'7", 160, but I'll tell you, he plays a lot bigger than that. We're really glad to have him. Brad, thanks for coming in. Uh, of course, Brad, we just want to ask you, you know, uh, like I said, we, we know you play with a big heart. You're a little guy, but you're all over that field. Uh, as the old term in 
football goes, you kind of got a nose for the football. How'd you develop that, or where's that come from in your game? Um, I I just started off in BJFL 11 defense, and I was never a big offensive guy, and just I always wanted to hit people, and then it just kind of stuck with me, and. Since then, I've just been flying around like that. Well, you sure do. You have, a, you know, I, I tell people last year we didn't know much about this guy coming into the season, but all of a sudden we found ourselves calling his name, you know, 10, 15, 20 times a game on defense, and this year it's just more of the same. Now, you guys got a big win uh, last week at Franklin. That was a fun game. It was a, it was a good high school football game, Brad. Yes, sir. Tell us about last week and, and your game on defense there. Um, we were – we had a pretty good start – well, not that great of a start, but we. It was came a bad back. start, Brad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we we came back. We stuck in there. Sure did. We as a team just came together and just said we need to get this together. We we fixed all the kinks and we came through. Yeah, you sure did. Big big comeback win there, and uh, you know the defense was a big part of that. Your offense now this year, Brad, scoring a lot of points. That's got to help you out, you know, compared to last year. But uh, how'd you get into playing defensive back? And uh, I know you enjoy that, but how about playing defensive back in this defense? Um, like I said, uh, ever since BJ fell, I was always a big defender. And then I, 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 uh, started my game off of, uh, Bob Sanders. I was a big Bob Sanders oh. fan. Mm-hmm. And ever since then, it, defensive back just stuck to me. How about the number nine? Where'd that come from? Um, actually it was from, uh, about two years ago when, uh, Cooper Wojcik played mm-hmm. and, uh, he, he, of course he, uh, broke his leg and, after that season, he asked me to wear his number, so cool. I agreed. And Great. Ever since then, I've just been been playing, playing for him. Very good, Brad. Now, like we said, we know you're short in stature, but uh, you must be a strong guy. How do you? How's your uh, weightlifting come along? Would you do a lot of that this summer with uh, Coach Nees? Oh yes, the team we've been. It was about every day, just lifting, running, doing all we can to get better. You still lifting some now after the yes, season sir. started? Yes, sir. We. We actually have a – it's one of our classes during the day, so we, we get a lift in during the, during the school day. Brad, then I want to ask about, you know, I know you guys work hard in practice. Uh, you know, as a defensive back, you got kind of got to read the play in front of you. H- how do you go about that? I mean, I know your coaches are going to look at, you know, this week at Avon Film and kind of give you a clue to what they do. But what do you try and do in practice to learn how to read, you know, the offensive plays, you know, from your defensive back position? Um, well, since from playing safety, it just depends what coverage we're in. Uh, mostly the the end line, of, the end man on the line of scrimmage, and it's just basing them off of how they react. And then the biggest thing is just watching film. All of us gotta gotta watch film, and do the right thing. So, you know, we see you flying around making hits. You really got to think out there, too, don't you, Brad? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Brad, and then uh, we know you also, now you played baseball for Brownsburg, uh, yes, second sir. base. Uh, you guys had a, a decent season last year, but I know you got in uh, got in quite a bit. You going to play baseball this season? Yes, sir. You like doing both? Yes, sir. Okay. Second base, your position? Yes, you sir. Know, I was thinking you probably got a chance to start. You know, I know Austin Jones graduated now, so mm-hmm. you may be the starting second baseman. Actually. Yes, sir. That, that's what I'm, I'm trying to go for. Good. Okay. Well, you got a big week this week, Brad. Now you're a senior. Last time in the Avon game, tell us about what it means to you to play uh, Avon in that, in that big rivalry. Well, like you said, it's always a big rivalry, and it's just just the feeling of the Avon game, Avon Brownsburg. There's nothing nothing better than that this year. It's just it's just something about it that just makes you want to like want want to win even more and more every every single year. And this, since it's my last year, I'm gonna put it out all out on the field. All of us as a team, we're going to come out there and just show them what we got. Well, we're real proud of you, Brad. I think you put it all out on the line every game, but I know this week's a big week for you, so we want to wish you the best of luck. Thanks for joining us here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Rainy night out here. We want to thank these uh, players and coaches for coming out in this uh, bad weather. it's really good of them. We're going to be joined now by uh, Mr. Tyler Kurtz, wide receiver. Where's number 17? Excuse me just a little bit. This mic's for you. Wide receiver number 17. He's listed as 6'2". Now, Tyler's a junior, but, uh, of course, you our Brownsburg fans very familiar with Tyler. He's an all-around athlete. We've seen him uh, play a lot of basketball, uh, ran, tra- ran track, and, of course, now he's uh, having a great season at wide receiver here for the uh, – Brownsburg uh, football team. Now, Tyler, you know, I was thinking about you and, and your running. Of course, I know from seeing basketball practice, you ran a lot. You did a lot of conditioning yeah. for, for basketball. 
you were on the track team. You guys got into the 4 by 4 finals in state and yep. won it. Yep. So all that track running. Now, I guess you do probably some running for football, but a little less. Other than the cross-country guys, I don't think anybody in <laughs> school has run as much as Tyler Kurtz. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. Now, do you do running on your own? Well, my dad, he's a personal trainer also as a teacher, so and he ran track at ISU, so he – he puts in running into our daily routine a lot. So Okay. Now tell us about that state final 4x4 four four relay team you're on. Well, if you take a look at – if you've seen our relay team, you would think – nobody would think that we could be 4x4 four four state finalists. So, well, in the season we were just – we were dogs. Like during track season we would – and we would push each other in practice and we would just – we'd push each other and by the time we got to the state finals we – do all that pushing we were like these, we looked to our left and our right we were like these dudes they didn't work as hard as us wow. so we're going to yeah. go out and beat them well that's terrific and and I think you told me before this that you're going to get a ring this this Thursday night during the Avon yep. game sometime yep. and that'll be your state championship ring yep well, it finally be, came in that'll be fantastic okay uh, now you're a full time wide receiver right now for the Brownsburg Bulldogs football um, you had to do some work over the summer I think to, to learn the wide receiver position or how did yeah. you develop that over the summer well I when I was younger, I always played wide receiver, but when I came to high school, it's obviously different. So they didn't need me on offense right right then when I was a sophomore, so they put me on defense, and, you know, I kind of lost some of my wide receiver footwork and skills. But I, they, I've always been a receiver all my life, so it's just second nature to me. I just had to get back into the flow of it. Well, good. You've had a big big season there. I know you've got, uh, I think, three touchdown catches, but uh, doing a good job. Uh, what's it like to catch a uh, Football is thrown by the talented Mr. Johnson. He's a pretty good throw, right? <laughs> yeah, Hunter's a great thrower. I, I like, I'm glad I have a good quarterback I can rely on to give me a good pass every, every time he throws me the ball. Yeah, and then uh, you had to learn your routes and getting open. Is this something you work in practice? You know, you guys are running routes. I, I know you work hard in practice. But yeah, yeah. Are you working on actually physically, hey, I'm five steps down, two left? Yeah, are you, pretty, we, you got that down pretty yeah, good? Yeah, when we, when we, every time we have our breaks, me and Hunter, we're, we're trying to throw routes and get our timing right so we can – just be 100% on every pass we throw. Good. Well, you're doing a good job. Uh, Tyler, now we've seen you back try- getting ready for some kick returns this year, too. Now, is that a new <laughs> yeah, thing I'm, for you? That is new. I'm trying. Coach Comer, he he, t- he shows me a film that holes I'm missing, but I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm think i a better punt returner than kick returner, but I'm going to try whatever the coach needs me to. I'm, I'm trying on that one. Well, we want to get you in that open and use that speed, man. Yeah. You know what? Uh, okay, now coming up this week, of course, that was a good win for you last week. Yep. How'd you feel about that? Come back win after I'm being glad. down for. I was happy for. I was happy for my my friend Tokes. I'm glad he yep. got that that score record. Good game. Yep. So I'm I'm just happy we got it. We had some a few fumbles in the beginning, yep. but I'm happy we just came together as a team and just like, hey, we gotta get this win. So. Right. Okay. Now, of course, uh, coming up this week, uh, the big Avon game, the rivalry game. Of course, you're a part of that basketball too. But uh, oh, I do want to ask it. You gonna play basketball again? Yeah. This yes, sir. Good, I'm playing very basketball. Good. Yep. Okay. Um, the big game this week. Uh, what's going up against Avon like? Been like for you, Tyler? Uh, first of all, on the football side. On football, well. You're gonna be a since, big part of it this year. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. So. I came here in seventh grade, and ever since then, that's when we started playing football in middle school. And I just haven't liked Avon. I just had a, I've had a bad taste in my mouth about them because they were always dogs. It was gonna be a dog fight. So I saw we just, I just really never liked them. I mean, I got friends over there, but when it's game time, it's like they're not my friend anymore. I just got, I, I got to get the, t- the win for my team. Good, good, okay. Well, Tyler, we thanks, thanks for coming in. Appreciate your visit. Me. Good luck uh, in football game and the rest of the season. And then we're gonna see you in basketball season. Thank you, Chris. Too. Thanks for having me. Okay, yep. thank you very much.
Welcome back. Um, J.P. Sinclair once again alongside uh, my co-host, Chris Worley. Uh, once again, some great student-athletes we've had the privilege of talking to, Chris. Yeah, and we appreciate them coming out on a bad weather night like this, but uh, just outstanding young men. Like, like we said, you hear bad stories about high school kids. Well, we, we don't see it on the athletic side, at least from the Avon and Brownsburg players we've seen. Uh, these, these two kids tonight are fantastic. You know, I love Brad Geilinger as a player, heart and soul player, gives us all every game. Tyler Kurtz is really a... He gives us all for basketball, track, and football. So two outstanding young men, and we're glad to have them. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you talk about it. You hear about bad stories like that all the time. But, yeah, yeah we've seen continually, you know, with Avon and Brownsburg Athletics that these student athletes are able to just, you know, some of them are just so busy. I mean, you talk about Tyler, or, I mean, both of them, or at sure. least two sports athletes, sometimes in Tyler's case three. Yeah. You know, that keeps you busy. And that gives you something to keep your mind on, too. I mean, we talked about it last yeah. week with Avon, you know, uh, the DB. You know, uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But we talked to him, and he was just like, you know, I just love getting out there and making a big play because sure. it just relieves the stress and tension that I have in me. He does. And, and, JP, I know you know this, but one thing most fans don't see or, or other people who follow these high school programs is all the practices these kids put in. You know, uh, the coaches at Brownsburg are nice to me, grant me some access to practice. And they practice way more hours a week than they do play the games. So they're out there doing that. They're not getting in trouble. Uh, they're getting their grades done and getting out there and practicing on both sides here in Avon and Brownsburg and other, all the other high school kids, too, do a good job with athletics. Yeah, we talked to the Comer about that before the, the before we even came on the air. I mean, even though the bad weather is here today on Wednesday, yeah. you know, they were still out there before the weather came yeah. in. But as soon as that lightning strike went in, they go inside. They yeah. still got film study. Yep. So, yep. I mean – they're, they're still practicing, even if yep. the weather's bad. Yeah, and then they come out here after all that and do a show like this. So that, that's terrific of those young men. And they still got to go home and do homework. Yep, probably so. Well, um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about our pick em challenge that we started doing. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, we continued to pick some games last week in our, our own pick em challenge between the two of us. In last week's games, you picked first, and uh, you had Hamilton Southeastern over Avon. Yeah, didn't want to do it. I, wa- I wanted you, Avon you to, wanted to go with game, your, so I'm your heart. I'm glad they did. But, yes, I had Southeastern in that game. And then um, you had Brownsburg over Franklin Community, yeah. which was a, a surprisingly tough game. That was a very tough game. Franklin's a challenge. Yeah, I, you know, like I said, I've yeah, you seen. I, I've seen them play, and I'm continually. Saying, I love the wishbone. Yeah. I always have. Whether I was either calling it for Division Two, going up to Northwood mm-hmm. to see them run it. Uh, you know, Brownsburg used to run it here. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just it's a great formation to play football, and it's you know they're going to run it. Well, it's that, just the problem of where the ball is actually. Oh, going. absolutely. Yeah, Brownsburg defense, they had a challenge all night keeping their head up. You know, the, the defensive line especially, they have to watch what's going on or they're off in a misdirection and tackling the wrong guy. And then it all came down to uh, the, the the Center Grove Carmel game, and uh, we talked about it. Center Grove lost to Carmel 21-14. You went with the home team, but the away team yep. was able to pull out the win. So uh, that was the one that won it for me because uh, – Brownsburg did pull out the win against a tough Franklin community team, so that was one for you. And then it all came down also to that Avon Hamilton Southeastern game, and Avon got it done for me. Went in thirty-one to ten to bring this season's uh, pick'em score, uh, for, uh, excuse me, this week's pick'em score two to one in my favor, and I now lead four and two on the early season. I need to go three and zero oh this week, JP. Let's get to it. Well, let's go and talk about those games. <laughs> These, this week's feature games are uh, Avon versus Brownsburg, yep. obviously. Um, it was it was just like I said it was the obvious choice. I mean this is going to be a great game. You know I'm going to get home and I'm going to start bugging Rob Kendall, our our, our mm-hmm. director of audio sports online, to make sure whoever I think I'm not sure if it's Brian or whoever has the game for that one yeah. to put that one up because I'm going to want to go home Friday after I get done with the Plainfield game yeah. and watch that one. Yeah, well Troy and I will be on the call and Rob's joining us. I believe in the booth. We may have a three man team that that night for the big game. So, um, and then we'll, the other game, one of the other games is uh, Westfield will take on Noblesville, and uh, uh, what I'm sure will be a good rivalry game. So that's two rivalry games for you already. Yeah. And then um, Drummo, the surprise game is Indianapolis Broderpool versus Indianapolis Washington. Indianapolis battle, love it, small. So you picked first last week, so I'm going to pick first this okay. week, and uh, we'll start with the uh, the Avon Brownsburg game, and this one's a tough one. Yes. Because. Uh, I think this will be a very, very close game. Both both these teams are excellent teams, offensively and defensively. I think Avon has just a little bit of an edge, um, particularly when you have a, a more established quarterback in Brandon Peters. So I'm going to go with Avon to uh, to beat Brownsburg in a close game. I understand. Uh, you know, you look at these two teams, they're both in the AP poll. Brownsburg snuck in this week on the AP. They're number 15, Avon number 10, of course, and I think Avon deserves that number 10 rating like you talked about uh, you know, I love Brandon Peters as a quarterback. So smart. And, you know, I, I haven't uh, been to one of the games, but I watched the uh, 
the Audio Sports Online broadcast of it last week, and he's grown. I mean, they list him now as six five. Of course, he's growing. He's a high school kid, and uh, now he's just a junior. But uh, this is going to be very tough, and I think they're really going to give the Brownsburg defense and our buddy Brad Geilinger a, a challenge. I am going to go with Brownsburg. Home here, big rival game. I think the kids will get up. Brownsburg's going to score now. That's the big difference uh, between this year and last year. They're going to score their points on offense. It's going to be a question of defense doing a good job. And I think a big thing for Brownsburg is get a couple turnovers. You know, somewhere. Get yeah, a turnover, turnover battle is going to be huge in this game. I'm going with Brownsburg. Well, you know, I'm also, now that you mention it, you know, those Audio Sports Online games are ar- archived. You yes. can always go online to audiosportsonline.com yep. and view any of the games archived from this season or I believe last season. I know they're on YouTube. Yeah, so they're on YouTube. You we, can always go back and look at those. We haven't had the camera the first couple weeks of Brownsburg. We're having it this week for the big game. Um, but the next game on our list, as we mentioned, uh, will be Westville to take on Noblesville. I picked the last game first, so you can pick this one first. Okay, uh, and this one, this is this is a good game. Both teams come in two and one. Uh, these are two big time programs. Of course, Zionsville six A, Westfield five A. But Westfield got to the state finals last year, and they feature a dynamic offense. Played Cathedral, if I remember. Right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, in the last thirty years, they, they only met fifteen times, but it's eight seven Noblesville, so it's always close. Definitely, I'm going to go with Noblesville at home. Uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, I, I think Noblesville at home is going to get this one. That's who I'm going with. Okay, well, that will lead me with Westfield. So um, then it all comes down to the IPS feature game, and that's going to be uh, Broderpool versus um, Washington. You know, I'm going to have to go with Broderpool. I mean, they're 0-3 on the season. Washington's 1-3 and on the season. But when it comes to schools like that, you can almost throw out the record because you know it's going to be a, a – knock down drag them out fight i mean it's once again it's a rivalry within the ips district so i'm going to go with broderpool okay i'm glad you said that because i'm definitely going with washington i understand what you're saying but broderpool outscored this year so far 14 to 165 now 75-0 was the cathedral game okay so uh washington one and two broderpool and three gonna go with the good old washington to win that game, <laughs> that'd be tough. Well, see, we if, pick I, if I pick, different things. if I pick against Broderpool, I'll have to uh, I'll have to hear it from uh, my Facebook fa- faithful, okay. you know, okay. my my alma mater, if you will. So well, I had to go with Broderpool on each game. Then I think this week, so this could be a big swing week. I need to go three and up. Well, it'll uh, it'll be interesting. We'll uh, recap that when we come back next week for our next show. Um, we are, of course, at the uh, the Green Street location off of I-74 at the McDonald's uh, for the Hendricks County Sports Show. Next week we'll be back at Avon to our original location where we first started, and that would be the Avon location yeah. off of uh, US-36 and 26. Well, old, it's Avon Road now, right. uh, but old 267 over there next to Kroger will be our uh, location next week. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the results from around Hendricks Ball Sports, and uh, we'll start with Brownsburg as we usually do around here. Football for the uh, Bulldogs saw a really good game against Franklin Community. We talked a little bit about it already, but, you know, you, you talk about – Talks, talks. Yeah. Talk, excuse me. Beast mode, Akron body. I mean, it was yeah. really the big story coming out of this one. I mean, he rushed for a phenomenal 351 yards and four touchdowns on only 25 carries. The 351 yards was a school record for Brownsburg. And like I talked to Comer about it, I just want this guy on my fantasy team. Yeah, no doubt about it. I, I think if you look at running backs here in Central Indiana, he's got to be number one. There, there may be a few others that have put up big performances too, but I'm, I'm sure he's number one as far as yardage, and it's got to be. A, MVP so far. I mean, you look at the rushing yards for Brownsburg. Nobody else hardly has any. I mean, they'll get a few guys to get another carries, but it's when it comes to the rushing game, Tokes is the man. I know you guys talked about it. You mentioned it, JP. The balanced offense now with some throwing from Hunter Johnson to these wide receivers like Tyler Kurtz really helps. But uh, what I noticed about Tokes in this game now is he's confident and he's patient, JP. He's looking downfield and he's using these blockers. He's not just rushing bull. 100 miles an hour into these holes and whatever. He's waiting, letting his blocker set it in front of him, and then if he gets the slightest opening with that speed, he takes off. Yeah, I mean, having that vision and that patience yeah. can really set you apart from a lot of the other. And we, you know, Tokes is obviously a, a you know, going to be viewed by a lot of colleges right. this year. So having a big year in his junior year, that's something that's that's very, very good yeah. for him. And, um, you know, very, very good for Brownsburg, as we talked about. I mean, They'll have a tough one this week against Avon, and that one will be a very good game. So uh, definitely looking forward to watching that one. Yeah, big, big game. It's going to be tough. That's, that's going to be big this week. Uh, the boys' cross-country team ran runner-up to uh, Avon. So a lot of Avon-Brownsburg games this, yeah, week. this week. In the uh, Hendricks County meet last Tuesday at Tri-West High School, uh, the dogs were led by a second-place finish from Harry Sathamurthy, a seventh-place from Seth Webster, and a ninth-place finish from Marcus Furick. 
Yeah, another tough week. And I think they're almost done. They don't have too many more weeks left in cross country. Yeah, once it's like golf, you know. Yeah. They start a little bit earlier. Um, and, uh, you know, they also had a very, very nice finish. They ran seventh place out of 14 teams at the Artisan Classic at Martinsville High School Saturday morning. Um, uh, Harry Sath- Satham Murphy once again led the way for the dog attack with a uh, top 10 finish. So um, they're getting it done and trying to get themselves prepped up for uh, big times, I believe, cross country run sectionals. So yeah. um, that'll be an interesting one. Sure is. Good week there for, for Brownsburg cross country. It was the uh, best Saturday of the season so far for the girls cross country team as they took on 13 other teams and placed second overall. A surprise. Only behind a very strong Columbus North squad, ranked sixth in the state. Uh, they ran pretty smooth and pretty aggressive race all the way through the girls showed their hard work is definitely paying off um, they had a lot of top 25 girls receiving medals out of the 95 individuals that competed um, we've mentioned these names before brooke uren 24 sydney montgomery 17th cassie brown 9th and julie popenfoos with the 7th and uh also got some contributions some from some of their freshmen so it was a uh, very very good race for the girls terrific to finish sec- second at all those uh, top cross country teams that's a very good finish they, i know they're proud of that uh, last Tuesday, the girls' golf team traveled to Bear Slide Golf Course. We only had one result from last week. Now all the results are in uh, for the uh, the HCC, the Hoosier Crossroads Conference tourney. Um, despite playing five, five ranked opponents, I mean the unranked dogs had a really superb match. They finished fourth overall. Brownsburg ended the day with uh, their best collective performance, scoring a 354. And when you talk about it, I mean you have number three Hamilton Southeastern in there, number five Westfield, mm-hmm. thirteen Fishers, uh, number eleven Noblesville. You know the. They, they finished above two ranked teams in Noblesville and Zionsville. So yeah. a very, very nice nice outing for the girls' team. Yeah, no doubt. I know Coach Phyllis Miller has to be happy with that that result, and that was a very tough field. So to do that well, good job, Brownsburg uh, girls golf. Uh, Matty Cody led the way and earned all-conference honors with a uh, round of 84 for the 18-hole course. Morgan Keir also made the all-conference team with an 86. So yeah. definitely a congrats to them for their yeah. individual performances in no that doubt. one. Um, the varsity team has a pretty eventful week next week. Um, they take on Greenwood, Martinsville, and they participate in the Franklin Central Invite. So they have another big week coming up. Hopefully uh, the weather has been a little hectic besides right. the, the rain. It's going to be really cold yeah. tomorrow. So um, that'll you know, be they interesting. They should like that. You know, they've been playing in some hot weather uh, here this late summer. Uh, so I bet you they'll like the change in the weather. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about boys' tennis for the Brownsburg Bulldogs. They took on number 13, Hamilton Southeastern, on Wednesday, and they lost 4-1. to one. Sam Peterson at number one singles brought in the uh, straight set win to put the dogs on the scoreboard, um, but the team you know, lost to a very tough Hamilton Southeastern team. And then they went and took on number 23, Brebuff, um, and lost 3-2 to two in a close match. Uh, Greg Fulling at number two singles won in straight sets. Uh, the number one doubles, uh, Jake Smith and Mason Wittis, started off slowly but came roaring back to win the final two sets. So uh, some good outings and some solid-ranked opponents for the yeah. tennis team. You know, you've been doing a good job uh, writing up these reports on on these different teams that we don't normally uh, cover. And you've been mentioning Greg Fulling all year when it comes to boys' uh, tennis for Brownsburg. And he's, a, he's just a freshman. So, you, you know, uh, he's going to go on and, of course, develop more and more. Uh, I expect Greg Fulling to do great things for Brownsburg tennis. Yeah, and you, t- you know, when you have it, we, we see these freshmen all the time. You start mentioning them when you're doing the show, and you look at it, they're freshmen. You know, we talked about Hunter Johnson last year. Having that experience early really helps in your continual growth as you're continuing because you, you're getting out there. Yeah, you hate to throw them, you know, into a, a big situation or a varsity situation, but in the end, it's going to help them grow, like you said. Uh, senior night for the, uh, the tennis team is scheduled for Thursday, 9 11 against Noblesville. Um, you know, so. Mark that date in your calendar if you want to go and see them and see how much uh, Greg Foley is starting to really grow in that freshman year. Yeah, and I think they have two seniors we want to mention, Michael Jeffries and Sam Peterson for Brownsburg Tennis on senior night. Uh, the volleyball team played their best match of the season in a 3-0 victory over Lafayette Harrison, bringing their season record to 5-1. and Leading the offense was Brooke Gregory and Avery Brown with 11 kills apiece. Allie Byers did a uh, good job managing the match with uh, 36 assists. That's a pretty high assist number even in volleyball. Claire Hathaway and uh, Mackenzie Harless controlled the defensive net with five and four blocks apiece. So uh, another good game for the volleyball team. And you look at all three of the, the, the high schools that we cover, each one of them yeah. has a pr- very solid volleyball yeah, team. Yeah, volleyball. Avon, Brownsburg, playing field. Good, good volleyball stats there. Uh, Claire Hathaway has been a good performer for Brownsburg volleyball all year. You know, I also found out that the uh, Brownsburg, uh, volleyball team is known as the Volley Dogs. Oh, okay. So 
I may have to start using that term a little bit yeah, more. But I like that. The Volley Dogs play Monday at home against McCutcheon. So I hope they have a T-shirt are, that says that. Are they still in the HCC? Do you know if the volleyball yeah, team? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Because, I mean, you look at it. They played Some Lafayette, Jeff, and Harrison uh, a couple yeah. times already. McCutcheon, too. They may have already set those, you know, or that, or that may be a carryover where they have to play those schools one more year. Not everybody cut over at the same time. Yeah. You know, uh, basketball, just they were still playing them this past season. Now, of course, this upcoming season, those schools are off the schedule. But that may be a carryover. Uh, last Tuesday night, the bar- boys' varsity soccer team hosted last year's 1A state champion in Guerin Catholic. It was a uh, very toughly fought match. Uh, senior Garrett Eads reported 13 saves in the goal. With less than 10 minutes to play, Guerin slotted in the final goal. Um, that gave them the win. Brownsburg 0, Guerin Catholic 1. So it was a very close matchup. Yeah, yeah no doubt about it. And uh, see now, uh, this is Brownsburg-Avon week. Brownsburg-Avon soccer went, la- went off last night there. And Avon defeated Brownsburg 1 to nothing. Yeah, so... Uh, once again, a very close matchup. I mean, soccer is typically a low-scoring game, but sometimes you see it in, in some of these high school games. It's pretty con- closely contested. We talked yeah. about it last week. There's only, I believe, two uh, two A and one A yeah. for right. the uh, the uh, soccer team. So, I do, I do want to mention though too in that game. You, you talk about low scoring. It was Brownsburg didn't get a shot off on on goal in that game last night. Avon defense did not even allow a shot on goal for Brownsburg. Avon's number one, I think, still. In, in soccer, so, you know, they're awful good. But, uh, yeah, that's the result on Brownsburg uh, soccer we had most recently. Um, the boys' varsity soccer team also faced off against a physical Harrison High School team uh, last Thursday. Uh, while this game was kind of touch and go, senior Garrett Eads stood up and uh, recorded his second shutout of the season with 11 save. The Bulldogs pushed hard in the second half with several chances, but just uh, couldn't couldn't get it in the back of the net, and they ended in a 0-0 tie. So yeah. that's kind of unfortunate when you have two games like that where it's, it's yeah. back-to-back, and, you know. Yeah, back-to-back zeros, but. Um, the team also traveled to Danville High School over the weekend. The Warriors played some excellent defense, but late in the match, senior Reese Holder scored the unassisted game-winning goal, which turned out to there be a go. determining factor. So yeah. they were able to find the back of the net against Danville. There so. you go. That's good. Um, after coming off two wins, the girls' soccer team traveled to Lafayette Harrison and played a very tough match. Harrison scored the first goal of the game, but Amanda Dotlich quickly answered. Uh, Harrison scored again at the half and to put the lead 2-0, but Dotlich scored another goal to uh, tie the game, but with four minutes... Harrison once again took the final goal of the game to win it for the girls. So yep. Yep. it was a very, very back and forth match. That was a good match. Yep. There's Lafayette Harrison in the mix again. I thought we were done with those people. We <laughs> talked about that though, but yeah, that was tough. You know, I, I'd have to. You look at well, you know the HCC the way it used to be constructed. I mean, that's a far drive up to Lafayette oh, yeah. for some of these high school teams. You know, we talked about it, and you'll we'll see a lot more with some of the other upcoming games we're going to go over. Mm-hmm. We're seeing so many out of state schools yep. play against some of uh, you, you know Avon. It's not just a you know, thing that Cathedral used to do. It's almost right. every single one of these teams schedules yeah. at least somebody that's going to be a drive for them. I'm not sure if that's to get them ready for the college experience. Yeah, or, I think so. Or just to get them ready to play different kinds of opponents. But um, yeah. it's, it's very interesting to see that go. I wouldn't be surprised if in, in football and probably in basketball too that you'll see in the coming years either Brownsburg or Avon take one of those trips to play one of the Cincinnati schools. It wouldn't surprise me a bit. Well, let's go and take a look now at Plainfield High School. The Plainfield football team lost their second game of the young season to uh, to a much improved Mooresville yeah. team over the past two years. They've already tied up their win total. They've actually already beat. No, they've tied up their win total over the past two seasons. Yeah. So they went one and nine, one and nine, and then this year they're already two and yeah, one. Two, two wins now. So a um, much improved Mooresville team. The team was still without their uh, the Plainfield team was all without their reading, uh, leading rusher from last season. I'll get it out eventually. Um, they also lost up uh, their backup John Finch early in this one. So yeah, the injuries tough. in the backfield have really plagued Plainfield this year. Um, they're still trying to. They rely so heavily on their rushing attack. Yeah. Um, but the real story in the game to me after watching it, was the play of Mooresville junior quarterback Alex Faber. From, you know, mm. he, was, he was spectacular. He threw ah. 329 yards on 31 attempts, completing 20 of them in three passing touchdowns. So, I mean, wow. it was a spectacular performance. Yeah, 329, you get over 300. Of course, that's great. I didn't know Mooresville uh, threw that much. So, I'm glad you were at that game and called that. And that's, uh, that's an impressive performance by Mooresville. Yeah, they really only rushed it 13 times. It was a passing wow. offense, spread offense. You had four receivers in almost every single set that they ran. Yeah, more and more teams going to the spread. You know, uh, it's a little more exciting, but you got to have the skilled positions, the quarterback and the wide receivers and, and running backs can execute it. So I guess Mooresville uh, trending upward on that. The uh, Plainfield boys soccer team is now 6-1-2 and two on the season. They beat a tough Martinsville team last Thursday 3-0, and then they played Jefferson to a 0-0 tie. Um, they also defeated Bloomington South in the Hoosier Cup 1-0. Um, and also in that Hoosier Cup, they dominated Northview of uh, Brazil, Indiana, 7-0. And then they also beat county rival Danville 2-1. to 
and then they played Decatur Central Thursday and Cardinal Render Tuesday. So it's another busy week for Plainfield Boys Soccer. Yeah, what, what a job here by Plainfield Soccer. Uh, they do have the best overall record in that Mid-State Conference with that 6-1-2 and two mark. They're the best in their conference. Uh, the girls' soccer team went 2-2-1 and one last week. They tied Ron Colley 1-1, rolled over Martinsville 10-1, to one, and then they barely lost to Jasper in the Hoosier Cup tourney 0-1. Um, and they also lost to Evansville, I believe it's Mater D. Yes. Um, in the tourney, but they did defeat Bloomington North 2-1. So uh, a solid week for the girls. 10-1. I hope some of the players that got in that usually don't score some goals. They probably get, hit a few, uh, you know, got a few goals there late in that game. I hope so at 10-1. to uh, Plainfield girls golf had also a very good week. They finished first at Eagle Pines in Mooresville against the Pioneers and also Whiteland. Um, they then went to Battleground Country Club up near Lafayette Jeff for their invitational, finishing fifth of 17. Um, they also played Cascade last night, and they play at Franklin Community tomorrow. Um, so it's a very, very busy week because they also are ramping up for the Mid-State Tournament um, that's coming up Saturday at Fox Hill in Martinsville. Yeah, and I can give you an update on last night's action. The Plainfield Golf did win that against Cascade, uh, 160 to 219. Of course, golf, the low score wins. So they won quite handily. And that, that Binge girl we talked about, her last name was Binge. I think she Freshman. shot a 38 to get the, the medalist there in that uh, meet. Um, the Quaker ladies took to the volleyball court last week as well. They played Martinsville 3 and 1 last Wednesday. Uh, the next night at Monrovia, they won 3 0. And then on Friday, they played a tough try West team, but fell short 3 2. Um, then on Saturday, they had the uh, Randolph Southern Tournament. Yeah. They beat Seton Catholic 2-0 in the first round. They beat Missawana Valley of Union City, Ohio 2-0 in the second game, and then they won against Franklin County 2-0 in the championship, the championship game. game. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, the volleyball teams for all three of the schools that yeah. we normally cover on the show, once again, getting it done. Very good out here, volleyball, no doubt. Uh, they play – Plainfield girls play Avon tonight, and then um, – so um, let's also That'll talk about that, Avon. Yeah, we'll check on that talk about Avon High School now. Uh, mm-hmm. The Avon football team ran away from Hamilton Southeastern last Friday, 31-10. to 10. They held Hamilton Southeastern quarterback Tyler Janney to only 8 of 21 attempts yeah. and one INT, and he's a pretty solid quarterback. Sure. And even limited junior uh, running back Aaron Matteo to only 60 yards, so some very impressive defensive numbers when you look at it, Chris. Really was. Our friend Brian Scott, who called that game, said uh, that he called it a dominating performance by Avon. It kind of surprised me. Well, in our pick em things, I took Hamilton Southeastern, but Boy, this is a, that's this. I think both wins last week by Avon and Brownsburg really sets up this big week this week to, to make it a good game Friday. And I expect Avon to be an awful tough challenge for Brownsburg on uh, Friday. But great performance again by Avon, and especially their defense. You know, Joe Belden, uh, a big IU recruit there on that uh, defensive line for Avon, had another big game. So big game uh, for Coach Blessing them to get that win over Hampton Southeastern in a conference matchup. I'm so looking forward to Friday. I'm not getting. I'm going to get home from Plainfield, and I'm going to be texting Rob like, "When's this game putting up? I want right, to see it." Right, right. Get that up. I don't. I'm trying. I'm only even trying to avoid the Operation Football scores because I'm just looking forward okay. to seeing it so much. Yeah. Um, the girls' golf team for the Orioles. Uh, they play at Franklin Central. Invite on the 13th, so that one's coming up for them. Uh, the girls' soccer team is now six two and one on the season following a uh, so so week. They beat yeah. Hamilton Southeastern one zero, but then they lost their next two games at the Zionsville Invite to Carmel and also Sacred Heart of Louisville, mm-hmm. um, but they did beat Mooresville 2-1 on Monday, and they play at Brownsburg tonight. Yeah, that's oh, tonight. You, I, I don't have that. Uh, if that's tonight, I'm, I hope they got that in. These rains hit here about oh, 7 o'clock or a little the, after. The flashes of lightning possibly in the, in the video feed, but yeah. it's coming down out there. So We're hope, looking right at the window. So Hopefully they got that game in. Um, the Avon High School boys team uh, still might go undefeated on the season. Yeah. Uh, they won 3-2 at Hamilton Southeastern, 2-0 at Park Tudor, and then they scraped by Brownsburg, 1-0. Uh, they play at St. Francis de Sales of Columbus, Ohio in the Great Midwest Classic wow. at North Central on Friday, and then they also play at Lawrence North and then Archbishop Moeller of Cincinnati on Saturday. So you yeah. talk about we talked about it a little bit. Those uh, out-of-state matchups are becoming a big thing for there a lot go. of these teams. And that's a good measuring stick for your team to you know to measure yourself against top-level competition. But I think that win over Brownsburg has Avon soccer now 7-0. and Correct. They're undefeated. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, the boys' tennis continues to roll for Avon, who are now in another impressive undefeated streak. They're 9-0 and on the season. They beat Fishers 3-2 last Wednesday. Uh, they dominated Lawrence Central 5-0 on Thursday. They then beat Terre Haute North Vigo 4-1 on Monday. Um, so they're beating teams, and they're doing it in a pretty dominant fashion. Um, they also played at Zionsville last night and won 3-2, and then they play at Mooresville tonight. Yeah. Well, possibly tonight. Hopefully. <laughs> a great season for Avon boys tennis, no doubt, doing a good job. Uh, girls volleyball team had a, a rough go of it early in the season, but uh, 
um, we, as we talked about repeatedly on the show, Straight but then, then they ran off nine straight wins yeah. uh, before running into Assumption of Louisville. Um, they had wins against Hamilton Southeastern, Fort Wayne Carroll, Newcastle, Floyd Central prior to that Assumption game. I was curious, so I looked up Assumption a little bit, yeah. ranked number 12 in the country. Oh, okay. um, so a very tough matchup, but as you talked about, a good gauge to where this Avon volleyball program actually yeah. is. Yeah. Um, I also wondered what in the world the mascot would be for a school named Assumption. I'd like to know that. Do you have any Did guesses? You see anything? Well, I don't think it would. It can't be. Uh, the Assumption Assumptioners? Uh, yeah, it, it can't. <laughs> I, I don't know what it would be. It can't be like a, a holy figure rising into the clouds like the real Assumption or something. I don't uh, know. I'll give you a hint. Think broader pool. It's, it's a rocket. Yep. Oh, my God. The Assumption Rockets. Um, so it turns out there's Brilliant, the Assumption JP. Rockets. I'm so. glad you looked that up. That I, I was curious because I'm like, if I, if I was going to the school, I, 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 I'm, I was just oh, curious. I so I'm like, it. Assumption Rockets. I was hoping it was going to be the Assumption Assumption. Oh, now does it show like the rocket taking off with smoke billowing out? You know, they did. And Max Preps, they didn't have a, a logo. I was actually okay. kind of disappointed okay. in that. Okay. So I might, have to, I might have to Google it later and oh, find out for I you. I love that. Um, they, uh, the Avon Volleyball Girls, they play at Plainfield tonight, which shouldn't get rained out, I would hope, because right, it's indoors. Playing, and uh, they also play at Brownsburg tomorrow night. Yeah. yeah so do you, do you have anything else to add, Chris? I, I do just want to add a quarterback we've been talking about here in Tri-West. Uh, the big we, guy. Yeah, we talked about Jake uh, Jake Hendershot and maybe him getting a, a offers. Well, guess what? Right after our show last week, uh, that same week, he did sign a commitment sheet to Illinois State. And then he goes out on uh, Friday night. Uh, they, uh, they got rained out. They had to go back to Saturday night. But he did not have a, a big game uh, throwing the ball. I think he only had 11 completions. But guess what? He runs in the game-winning touchdown, and Tri-West wins 11-5. to five. So I uh, just want to mention uh, Jake Kendershot. I think he's the best quarterback in Hendricks County, senior now. And he did sign an offer sheet to Illinois State. I think he'll fit in just right. That's a good time, a good type of school for him to play for. Yeah, I'm trying to think of where Illinois State actually is and what their team is. That's Division One, correct? Yeah. Uh, uh, we know them Northern from basketball. Illinois. No, uh, I forget the town there in Springfield. We we know them from basketball. You know, they they have had a good basketball team before, but uh, you know, uh, I think that's the perfect type of program and league for him to get into. I don't know that he's a Division One quarterback, but uh, you know that that's a big time school and they they got a good sports tradition. I bet he'll be starting for them and he'll probably put up some good numbers. Yeah, anytime you get a college scholarship offer, it's it's obviously a good thing. Sure. So congratulations to uh, Jake Hendershot. So. Um, well, that'll just about do it for the show. It's been a fun show for us. Uh, the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show was written by me, J.P. Sinclair, and produced and distributed by audiosportsonline.net. Some of the music provided tonight for Mevio's Music Alley. You can check them out at music.mevio.com. Special thanks to Brownsburg football coach Brett Comer and his two players for joining us today. Uh, that would be uh, Tyler Kurtz and also uh, Brad Geilinger. So obviously a uh, big shout-out to them for joining us, and we definitely appreciated having them on. Yeah. Um, our next show will be, as I said and earlier, uh, Avon at the 267 location next to Kroger. Uh, we record on location on Wednesday with the show airing on xrbradio.com, 1610 a.m. Friday prior to football game time. Uh, you can always send any feedback or if you have questions or comments you'd like to hear talked about on the show, you can send those to jp.sinclair1988 at gmail.com. And you can also follow me on Twitter at SinclairJP. Uh, thanks to tuning. Thanks to you guys for tuning in. Um, it'll be a, a very nice Friday football game. We can't wait to talk about it next week. The big game. We will talk about it. Uh, so for uh, Chris Worley, I'm J.P. Sinclair, hoping you support high school athletics as much as we do.